Greetings, vinyl community. I hope y'all are doing well. Unlike me, which we'll get to in a second. I've been gone for a while, uh, relatively speaking, to my videos. I've been doing, uh, on average, a, a video a week recently. And then um, I had a bit of a back procedure last week. And I have been out of commission. We'll, just, we'll call it a back procedure because I don't want to go too much into detail. But I have a horrible bad back from an injury I suffered at work years ago which I think I may or may not have talked about in, in the past. But uh, anyways, without, without going too much into detail. Um, so, uh, yeah. So I've been, like I said, I've been laid up. I've had to miss some work. For example, this is, this is, this is how bad it is right now, is that it's a uh, beautiful 22 above right now. Not a cloud in the sky. Awesome. Beautiful fall day. My wife and dog get to go out for a dog walk in our river valley which is beautiful and i'm stuck at home because i cannot do any lifting or lengthy walking how's that but you know what you do get to see youtube videos because i get to, i get a chance to do some youtube videos listen to some vinyl and um the most important thing that you get to see today is dave on heavy pain medication which i am right now so this could get really loopy and I'll watch back and I'll be horribly embarrassed. Or this could be a lot of fun. Or this could be boring as hell. Who knows what's going to happen today. But in order to do this video, I had to take some medicine. But you know what? Cheers, everyone. This is the only medicine I need for real. Coffee. Cheers. New mug. Anyways, I don't know what that was supposed to be. Pete Townsend. Cheers, everyone. All right. How is that for a preface to this video? I wonder how many times I'm going to trip over my tongue today. Anyways, um, I did not do a Record Store Day video drop two. In case anyone was wondering. Some, some people have asked me, if my, was I going to do a video? And no, because I thought Record Store Day video... Or, <laughs> see, this is going to happen now. I'm on pain medication. I'm going to trip over my tongue all the time. Um, on the drop two, I thought it was really bad. And I know there's a lot of people out there who are going to say, or are posting, I bought this, 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 and this, and this. And that's wonderful. Uh, there were a few things that I got, um, but it's not your typical records today um, drop. It was really disappointing, I thought. In fact, I'm going to say it was really bad. And it's all relative to what came into your city. So if you didn't get a lot in your city, it was extra bad. And it was extra bad this time around. So I did not do a video because... What, what do you want me to show you? Two things I bought. That's exciting. But anyways, so let's get to that right now. Oh yeah, what have we got in this video? Ah, I've had some incredible, honestly, incredible thrift store hauls. And I mean, awesome, which you're going to see. Uh, even by my standards, it was pretty damn good. Um, for one kind of music, which you'll see, which I never see at thrift stores. And then I got a couple of records today. And I don't think I have any new vinyl to show you that came in the mail. No, it's going to be almost all thrift store vinyl. How, how's that? So one more time. Let's see if we can wake the old boy up here. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's get to this. Uh, a couple of record store day um, uh, things I did get. Like I said, highly disappointing for me. And uh, if you disagree, that's cool. Let's agree to disagree. I like you, and I hope you still like me, because we can still be friends. The alternate Fleetwood Mac rumors. You knew I was going to get this one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Every record store day, they do an alternate something of Fleetwood Mac. Alternate Tango in the Night, and the alternate uh, Fleetwood Mac, and the alternate Tusk, and... and uh, what happens is that they reissue the album on CD with bonus discs. And one of the bonus discs is always the alternate whatever album that is. And all, some of them are good. I found Tango in the Night very disappointing, the bonus one. Um, but this time around, oh yeah, I love this. Limited edition of 16,000. That's not fucking limited edition, guys. Let's not kid ourselves here. That's you know, that's a wide distribution, sixteen thousand copies. For Christ's sakes. Anyways, um, so I, I have heard this before on on the triple disc set that I bought, uh, so I knew what I was getting. And on vinyl, it's really good. I'm just gonna say that it's a really heavy vinyl too. 
which was very surprising. It feels heavier than 180, but it's probably not. But this is one of those cases where uh, the all I always talk about this. I don't fucking care about demos, and I don't care about bonus discs of uh, you. Some rock star strumming in his bedroom. I don't give a shit about that. It's boring and it's horrible, and I don't care. Um, this is not so much that. These are like alternate mixes, alternate takes. And there's a couple of demos. Um, there's a demo of the chain that Stevie Nicks does. That's I, di I didn't like it at all. I thought it was pretty bad on this album. Apart from that, highly recommended. Really good if you're a fan of this album. The alternate takes are, are good. And yeah, there you go. That was one of the things I got. And the other thing I got was also, this was the number one thing I was in line for. And I stupidly lined up a long time to be first in line because some stores didn't get this in my city. Um, and I was on the hunt for one and I had a guy I met in line who's he was going to get me one for a friend of mine, Tom. And the store I went to had two copies. So got them both. I got, I got to get my friend Tom one too. He's the, he's the king of music in my city. I have to, I got to, you know, got to. Hey Tom. Anyways, Roger Waters, The Wall, live, 19... Was it 1990 or 91? It's when The Wall came down anyways. I remember watching this live on TV. And I've seen it many times since then, the DVD, etc., etc. And uh, I don't... I've never actually read online what people's opinions are of this album. Uh, I did read about it on Wikipedia when I was listening to it. And, and Wikipedia, take it for what it is. It's kind of like... Uh, uh, I don't know what it's like. Something that's highly unreliable like my back anyways um mixed reviews uh i like it um i've always liked it um i think the band the band band of levon helm and uh, rick danko on this album i think they are really strong um cindy lauper although in the mix on this on the album she's while well, she's singing a duet with roger waters and her voice is kind of a little bit um I'm not sure if it's mixed in the background or what, but it's not as prevalent as, let's say, the DVD you watch. Uh, and it's got a... You guys know about this album. I'm sure you do. Come on. Anyways, um, the band is awesome. Uh, and only, honestly, believe it or not, I always thought Brian Adams was really good on this. Um, he does Run Like Hell, and I can't remember what else he does, but he does another song. Anyways, uh, but I always thought Brian Adams, I'm not the hugest Brian Adams fan, but I think he was really good on this. And uh, Sinead O'Connor, God bless her. I love her. I've said this before. I love Sinead O'Connor. Uh, I don't care about her personal views. I just, I love her music. I love her singing. Um, I thought she does an insanely good uh, job on Mother. And uh, Ute Lemper. I, I, before I saw this on, on the original broadcast, I had no idea who she was. Uh, she was great. And honestly, one of my favorite bands from the 80s, the Hooters, are on this from Philadelphia. And in fact, I think they did a, an opening set for this concert with, uh, I think the band as well, they did opening sets. Um, so the, the, the Hooters were on this too, and I, I'm a huge fan of the Hooters. You know, Nervous Night, you know, All You Zombies, and She Danced, or And We Danced. Anyways, uh, yeah, I'm going on and on about this. Oh, yeah, Joni Mitchell's on it, too. It's just, I think it's good. I like it. It's not one of those uh, record study albums where I'm going to play once and file and, you know, remember every now and again, oh, yeah, I got this album on record study and, you know, brag to someone who didn't get it. I don't know. Anyways, uh, those were the two record study albums I got, good for bad. Uh, fuck, there was nothing else I wanted. Cheers. Yeah. So, um, I think I got one album to show you from a local record store, and it's the one Kiss album. I, if you're a regular viewer, you guys know I love Kiss. I'll talk about that poster one day, what it means to me. It means a lot to me. Anyways, uh, I, I have a complete discography of Kiss. I've got multiples of every album, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, much like Liam out there. Hey, Liam in Calgary. Hope you're watching. Uh, but this album here, I've never <clears throat> pursued. Uh, I was never a huge fan of this album, but there it is in my face for the first time. I'm actually holding it in my hands. And it was actually a really good price. It was like 19 bucks for the original red vinyl version of Kiss My Ass. Tribute album. And one little fact here 
If you can see all the makeup of the original Kiss is represented except for um, this little fella. Um, yeah, who's staring a little too hard at his plate. Or praying. Um, the reason, this is uh, Paul Stanley's old makeup as the bandit. The bandit, sorry. And they could not get the rights to Ace Frehley's makeup in time. Uh, before the release, I guess at that time Ace really had the rights to his his makeup, which I think he's he's uh, sold back to Kiss. But that's why I've always wondered why there was not uh, Ace represented. But uh, I I just never thought this album was very good. There's a couple good things on it, but this album doesn't know what it, what it wants to be for a tribute album. Take an album like Nativity in Black, the tribute to Black Sabbath. That album that's a that's a tribute album that knows what it's doing, and there's other tribute albums I should uh, I'm blanking on, but. I'm going to use that one as an example, Nativity in Black. That knows what it is. It's appealing to one demographic. Boom. And it's done really well. It's aged well. And it's still highly regarded for tribute albums. This one, not so much. Because it's got metal. And it's not one of those cases where diversity is good. No, it, in this case, it's... Uh, it's you got Anthrax doing uh, She, which is really good. And you, but you get Lenny Kravitz doing Deuce. And... Uh, and, you know, what was that really bad one? Toad the Wet Sprocket doing rock and roll all night. It's just, I'm sorry. This is no reflection on the band because I'm sure someone out there loves Toad the Wet Sprocket, but that's, it's fucking terrible. But, uh, and oddly enough, Garth Brooks is on here doing Hard Luck Woman and kisses the, kisses the backup band for that. And that's really good. And, uh, cause Anthrax is good. The Gin Blossoms, uh, they did a really good version of, uh, Christine 16. Um, Dinosaur Jr.'s Going Blind is good. And other than that, yeah, the rest of it's fucking filler shit. And it's not something I would put on all the time. Just and I just bought it because it's in my face. Good. The collection is done. I have at least one of everything, if not two or three. Um, but, yeah, I have really mixed feelings about this album. It's Kiss, but it's really kind of... It's kind of like Gene Simmons. And oh, the funny thing is... Uh, on the, there's a Kiss My Ass DVD, uh, which is kind of behind the scenes making of stuff and blah, 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 of this album and other stuff. But there's a, a track listing of songs that were submitted that obviously did make the cut and Nine Inch Nails is one of them. And the bands that did make the cut, if those would have been on here, this would have been one of those tribute albums that would have survived through the years and still sold. But yeah. Disappointing, but at least I have it now on vinyl. Cheers. And honestly, the Garth Brooks version of Hard Luck Woman is really good. So um, at least that is just kind of worth it. All right, here we go. Thrift store stuff. Um, there's a couple items in here that I got via... Oh, when I get to that, I'll tell you. I got via um, a work friend. And there you go. All right. Um, this was the, the haul that I was teasing last video. So uh, let's go with the album that was there first, actually, that I teased with was the Smiths' first album. Uh, in a lot of ways, I think it's their best album, but at a thrift store, I'm not going to talk about every album, obviously, because it'll be a way too long video, and I got a lot to show you, but at a thrift store. Some mother donated their son or daughter's collection while they're at it fucking university somewhere or college somewhere. Eh, hey, let's clean the bedroom. Oh, there's compact discs now they listen to. They don't need this stuff. And she donates it, and I'm like, holy mother of God, this is insane. Smith's first album, amazing. And these are all, I'm not just going to preface this by saying all these, um, without, it goes without saying, are in really, really good condition or I wouldn't be buying them. There's a lot of stuff I put back because they weren't in good condition. Smith's first album, amazing. Um, the Replacements, Pleased to Meet Me. Um, maybe the best find I've had in this whole video, possibly, because it's my favorite Replacements album. Uh, I needed a Replacement copy, really bad <laughs> Replacement copy. It's the bad title. And I'm pleased to meet you. <laughs> my favorite um, Replacements album, and my copy has been played to death since um, I bought it. Back, was it 87, I'm guessing? 87. I am correct. Um, and in fact, the song, The Ledge, I saw that video on MTV and they used to have little um, commercials about, you know, like 
paid commercials about this album. Like 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 any new album, you know, buy the new replacements album, blah blah. But they did a little vin they did a little thing on um with Paul Westerberg talking about the song The Ledge and what it meant to him. It's about uh, if I can remember correctly about him being suicidal, um and with the ledge. Just but uh and I yeah. It was a really heavy moment to see that and then buy the album and uh I don't know if heavy is the right term, but uh yeah. So the ledge is my favorite replacement song, and this has Alex Kilton and IOU, and it's just a great album. And I got a, an insanely nice upgrade copy of this album, and I'm thrilled, thrilled to be it. Joy Division, unknown pleasures, and as you can tell, I ran out of uh, sleeves. I meant to go get some today, but it didn't quite work out. Uh, I don't know what pressing this is. This is Canadian, but it's, te it's textured. On factory records, obviously. Uh, yeah, I I don't know if I have a, a textured Canadian copy in my collection, but now I do. I don't know what more I can say about the album. One of the most cold, cold albums ever. I'm sure there's a better term for it. Um, Cocteau Twins Treasure. Um, I'm trying to think if this is my favorite Cocteau Twins album. It might be. I like myself some Cocteau Twins and Dead Can Dance and stuff. The original Inner Sleeve. Beautiful. Um, I gotta be in the right mood to listen to Cocteau Twins and bands like, you know, Dead Can Dance, etc., etc. But when I do, I, I'm really into it. And I, I really love this album. And I, I have a nice upgrade copy. Thank you to the thrift store. REM Document. Another upgrade copy. I think Hannah actually sent me a copy. We did a little swap a while ago. And, uh, I'm not sure if I don't know sure what copy is better, the one she sent me or this one, but I got um, I got another copy of document. Uh yeah. It has the finest work song on it. So already I win. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Simple minds, yeah, this is a twelve inch single. I don't know why I bought it because I already have it. But I just grabbed the whole lot of records that were in this bin at the thrift store. Um like I said, if you follow me on Instagram. N-A-Z-Z -Z underscore nomad at and as underscore nomad. I posted a photo of me finding these at the thrift store. Because it's too unbelievable. You wouldn't believe me if I didn't post a photo. I wouldn't expect you to. It's so unreal. But I bought this as part of the lot. And then when I the cashier was ringing it through, I'm like, oh, I already have this one. And I have a nice copy of it. But it's a 12-inch single for Don't You Forget About Me from The Breakfast Club. It's got the extended remix on it. And on the B side is the actual proper um, album version. So, did I need it? No. Did I buy it? Yeah. Someone will want it. A really nice copy of NXS Kick. And this is a Columbia House copy. Um, I'm not sure how you identify Columbia House copies in uh, America. America? But Canadian copies have C. Even if you can see that in the corner there. On the bottom it says CRC. That's how you can tell it's a Columbia House copy in Canada anyways. And usually the uh, the the uh, catalog number is a bit different, but that's how you can tell. But I have a it was a this is a nice Columbia House copy, regardless. Um, a couple Canadian things I'm going to wait on to show you because I'm not sure how many people will know these things, but I'll, I'll show them to you. Um, and then this, this is the dark horse that was in this pile, uh, Don McLean American Pie. It's a reissue on Liberty Records. So uh, the Style Council. What is this? This is the cost of uh, the cost of loving. Double album? Is it double album? I think it's a double album. We've we've talked about the style council before. Uh, I believe a long time ago I had said uh, I'm not a big fan of theirs, and some people were like, "You gotta listen to this album. You gotta listen to this album." But uh, or I made some derogatory comments about the style council. I'm trying to get back. I'm trying to I'm trying to listen, and I'm trying to appreciate what Paul Weller was doing. But the cost of loving. I'm trying. All right. Um, one of the other really good finds, the the infected. I already have a copy, but like I said, I'm not gonna. This is this is the one on some bazaar. Oh, look at that. The the infected. Great great album. And in fact, this album and he, it's Matt Johnson more or less is the the. Um, but he did an album called Mind Bomb, which I 
love. But that and this album are my favorite the, the albums. Infected. Ah, uh, Canadian content. Give me a second. Okay, you know what? There are some Canadians out there, and these bands may or may not have made it out of Canada. The Grapes of Wrath. Uh, Treehouse. Um, a very college indie band. If, you, if there ever was a Canadian college indie band, uh, it would be the Grapes of Wrath. Um, yeah. This was produced by Tom Cochran of Red Rider fame. Lunatic Fringe. I'm talking to people in America and the UK who might not know Tom Cochran. But uh, I think the song on this one was Oh Lucky Man. It was a kind of a, a minor hit in Canada. Grapes of Wrath Treehouse. And then I got their other album after this one. It's called uh, Now and Again. Uh, All the Things I Wasn't. That was the big song on this one. In Canada, anyways. And I think they might have been just video hits on our video channel. But Grapes of Wrath. And then uh, one more Canadian band, 5440. Uh, you know, I don't see their album, their vinyl very much. I see their first EP a lot. I don't really see their later albums very often on vinyl. Um, but the big song on here is, and it's a good song if you listen to, is uh, a song called One Day, in, uh, One Day in Your Life by a band called 5440. In fact, uh, do, do you all know the Hootie and the Blowfish song, um, Every Time I Look at You, I Go Blind? Uh, I still hear it on the radio all the time. Uh, that was a cover version of a 5440 song. That was originally one of their songs. So I'm sure they're uh, during COVID, 5440 or the writers of this of that song are paying their rent on royalties from that because it still gets tons of airplay, tons of airplay. Yeah, it's it's the, it's the pain meds. Trust me. 5440. Um, I actually I actually quite like 5440 quite a bit. Um, Happy the Man, one of the greatest prog albums ever. And in fact, I'm over right over. No, no, I'm wrong. Sorry, I'm wrong. I, I was going to say I'm looking at a UK copy over there, but I'm looking at a copy of Hatfield in the North over there, original UK copy. But Happy the Man, one of the uh, better progressive rock albums ever. It's always in those lists of, you know, I mean, not top twenty, but I'm going to say top fifty greatest prog progressive rock. I feel drunk and high right now. Anyways, uh, it's always in those lists of best progressive rock albums ever. And this is a promo copy, although someone tried to peel a promo sticker off. But this is, from, and I had to Google this. There's a uh, call letters on here from a radio station, uh, hence the the tags numbering system from the radio station, which is no big deal to me. Um, it's from CKOM, and I Googled that, and it's an AM station in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan which I've been to many times and not by choice. Just kind of had to go through it. You guys will know what I'm talking about. Anyways, Happy the Man. At a thrift store. Interesting Beach Boys album. It's called 10 Years of Harmony. Double album. I've really been into albums like Wild Honey lately and Surf's Up and the Dennis Wilson solo stuff, etc., etc. And I've never seen this Greatest Hits album. In fact, they had another Greatest Hits album that I left there from this hall, The Spirit of USA or something. I left that there. But uh, I got this one instead, uh, 10 Years of Harmony, which is a double album, best of of uh, everything that um, started with their own record label, Brother Records. And so it's about 19... Oh, what says right here? Sorry. Not, about 1971, 72 to 1982. So it's that period after they were, you know, Surf's Up, the Surf, where they were all big and grisly and you know um as they as people were in the 70s but it's all that stuff after that stuff it's um uh stuff like i said stuff from wild honey and uh i think anyways really good listen i really am starting to get into the beach boy 70s stuff um i find it a lot more um satisfactory than I do their early stuff. And I think because I've heard the early stuff so much and I've not heard the 70s stuff a whole lot. Great album. So if you ever see this kicking around, it's a really good introduction, uh, double album into their, uh, kind of their part two period in the 70s. Cheers. Um, another Canadian one. I'm going to show it because I, this is one of the, I, when I go to Germany, Bands like this, their albums in Canada, their albums are like five bucks. They're always in the dollar to five dollar bins. 
when I go to Berlin and Hamburg and whoever else, I have to laugh because I see these Canadian albums there, like the one I'm going to show you, and they're like 25 euro. It's like, and I understand <clears throat> it's very common to find here, but there's a market there that will pay 25 euro or 20 euro or whatever for street hard albums and bands like Trooper and Harlequin. And uh, I'm sure I'm missing some, but bands like that, um, Toronto, did I say Headpins? Albums like that. So <clears throat> Street Heart, double live album called Live After Dark. Look at them. Like, is that a posed photo or what? <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> I feel like I'm coughing up a frog here. Um, at their height, Street Heart in Canada, they played our hockey arena here where all the big bands played. They played our arena to about, about 12,000. Um, that's how big they were in Canada at one point. And a band like Trooper, who you, you probably don't even know who I'm talking about. They would, at their height, they would play our hockey arena and sell it out. So that's how big these bands were in the late, late 70s to early 80s. But Street Heart is one of the, the best kind of classic rock Canadian bands. And I still listen to them. And this is a great live album. Live After Dark double album. I'm just trying to get you guys familiar with some Canadian stuff. Speaking of Beach Boys, I found an original Capital, um, is it mono or stereo? It's stereo, of Surfer Girl on the Capital Rainbow label. So this is the stuff that I'm kind of, you know, eh, and I'm getting some more of their 70s stuff, but really nice clean copy of Surfer Girl, original pressing, which I'm not passing up. So, and which is odd, because I've never really been outside of Endless Summer, that greatest hits album, I've never been a huge Beach Boys fan until I heard uh, Dennis Wilson's solo album. And then I kind of like, hmm, even though that's his solo album, maybe their 70s stuff is something similar to that of quality, not sound and quality. And I'm finding that it is. It's hit or miss, but there's some good stuff out there. Bon Jovi, New Jersey. Um, I have it. This is a really nice uh, pressing, though. I'm not sure if it's an upgrade copy. It's not something I pull out to listen to very often, but it, at the time, I loved this album. Um, what's my favorite song on this album? Born to Be My Baby. That has a great chorus. Or uh, pre chorus. Anyways, there you go. Bon Jovi, New Jersey. Sparks. Ants in My Pants. Yeah, Thrift Store. Sparks. Um, this was from, what's, uh, what year is this from? I'm going to say 80, something, 82. And it's a gold stamped promo copy. You can see there. Sparks, Ants in My Pants. Uh, I'll save that one. Uh, a progressive rock band that's actually really good, but not very collectible. I'm not sure why, but uh, if, this is the second copy I've owned of this album. It's a band called Atlantis. It's getting better on Vertigo. It's that, it's that label right there that drags me in every time. I'm a sucker for Vertigo. I am. Anyways, Atlantis. It's, it's decent. This is another one of those albums that belong to uh, CKOM. And you can see there, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Where the farm boys are huge and they play hockey and they kick everyone's ass because they're just massive farm boys. And they're huge and they will just kick your ass in uh, the National Hockey League. That's what they do there. Atlantis, uh, some of you may have seen this out there. It's not It's not the greatest progressive rock album ever, but it's there. Um, a nice upgrade copy of Dion, Runaround Sue, an original copy, a uh, Canadian copy on REO Records. Even though the front says Laurie Records, it's a Canadian copy. Um, I made myself a nice playlist for the car. My new car, I bought a new car, or truck, SUV. Um, there's no CD player. They don't put CD players in them anymore. So you have to stream on my phone. It's frustrating. I got all these fucking CDs I kept for my car stereo. That I bought a brand new 2020. What the hell am I going to do with all these CDs now? Come on, Nissan. Think of me and my CDs. Anyways, I made a really good... I don't know why. I don't know why. I made a really good 50s playlist. And uh, Dion featured on it quite a few times. And then... I'm, so I'm really into it. And then I go to the thrift store and they have a copy of Dion, uh, Runaround Sue, uh, which I was looking for an upgrade copy because my copy was definitely a filler copy. So that one I can toss. 
because it sounds like bacon frying on it. And this is actually a really good album. It's got uh, um, it's got The Wanderer, and it's got Runaround Sue, two of his best songs ever. Frank Sinatra. I don't know why. I you know what? This is Sinatra original pressing on Capitol Records. And I don't know why I buy these Frank Sinatra albums because I find them all the time. And when I find really good condition ones, sometimes I find people who want them. There's huge Sinatra fans out there. Um, I can take them in small doses, but it's just these, the covers they did are just very striking covers. And you see that in their thrift store. It's like, you, you know, the guy's a legend and you should appreciate his music. And I've never really gotten around to appreciating it. A few things here and there. But, uh, yeah, fuck. This was a buck 99, so. Uh, we'll skip that. <clears throat> a couple of albums from uh, Workmate. Um, uh, someone I work with named Allison. Hello, Allison. You'll probably not see this video. But uh, I work in a new place now. Same company, different place. And uh, her and her husband, uh, I'm not sure if they were cleaning house or doing some spring fall cleaning or something, but they had some albums to give away that her husband didn't want anymore. Uh, my wife still works with Allison. And she's like, does David want these albums? She texts me and I said, yes, please. Jeff Beck. Um, she had some Jeff Beck albums and one other thing I'll show you. Uh, what is on this album I really like? Ambition. Ambitious is a song I really liked. The uh, this guy, I remember the video on MTV when I was young. And it's the one where the, all, the you know, the, it's a, it's a, a video has been done time and time again, but it may be the first one I think of, of its kind, but it's the video where they audition different people to sing the song, uh, you know, and they have different celebrities come in and like, like it's an actual audition. That's the video I remember anyways, but I thought it was a good song and it has a, the song people get ready that Rod Stewart sings on, which was actually a hit song. So there was uh, Jeff Beck flash and there was Jeff Beck uh, with the, with the Jan Hammer group. And then uh, Jeff Beck wired. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any point to talk about that album. And then you know what? Um, I got some country albums because I need to stretch out. I need to listen to some different stuff. There's a, a, a saying I like to say. So sometimes you need some new jokes. And it, it doesn't literally mean that I need new jokes. It's just sometimes I just need something different. And uh, your ears kind of just get tired of uh although i have everything <laughs> i don't have everything but i have a, a lot of different kinds of music is country is not well represented in my collection so but our thrift stores in my city are just inundated with uh country music albums so but these ones stood out and i thought these were all in one big hall and i thought oh you know what they're cheap i'm gonna listen to them and and uh be a little bit more educated about these artists, which I, oh, I've always said this. I always want to never be ignorant of someone's music. Very important to me. So if I say something sucks, I want to be educated enough to know why it sucks or why I feel that way or why I don't like an artist. Just to say blanket someone sucks is kind of ignorant a bit. Merle Haggard. This is uh, 11 of his greatest hits on the Epic record label. So, uh, yeah. I, and all the stuff I grew up with from my dad. Uh, George Strait's Greatest Hits, his first Greatest Hits album. There was, uh, I think I have part two here somewhere from this hall, but it's somewhere else. I'm, I was busy cleaning it. Uh, George Strait, Greatest Hits. I did listen to this the other day, and it was, uh, that was fine. Half and Half, Willie Nelson, and then he uh, has other guest stars on here, which I've heard before many times from my dad. But it's, you know, have a look. If you can identify anyone on there, there you go. Uh, Willie Nelson doing duets. Hank Williams' greatest hits. Uh, I have to be in a mood to listen to Hank Williams. Like, um, like Cocktail Twins and Dead Can Dance I was talking about. But uh, this is a really good greatest hits album. It's got pretty much everything you would want from Hank Williams on it. I got a really... This is a really nice copy. This I see this album at thrift stores all the time. Very rarely in really nice condition. This is originally... Uh, this is an original Capital or Columbia 2i of uh, Johnny Cash's Greatest Hits Volume 1. Nothing more I need to say about that one, but a really nice copy. Uh, another Merle Haggard, uh, All My Best, which is kind of like the greatest hits not represented on that first album. There's a lot of songs on this one. Probably like 15. 
And you know what? Here's the other. I only got a couple more left, so just hang tight. This is the other album that uh, Allison, the Jeff Beck stuff, um, that uh, she wanted to uh, pass along to me, which is a solo album by Stuart Copeland called The, Rhythm, uh, the, the Rhythmist. And uh, I have not yet heard this album, but I think I will after I'm done this video because it just looks very interesting. To me. Uh, last one I'm going to show you uh, is uh, Pete Sinfield. Uh, he of uh, King Crimson. Uh, this is his one and only solo album called uh, Still. It's an original Manticore pressing on um, Canadian Manticore pressing. Uh, I, I knew who Pete uh, Sinfield was. I know some of the songs he, he's written. Uh, he's written some hit songs after uh, in the 80s for people, in the 70s. Um, he's, he's primarily a, a lyricist. But uh, his one and only solo album, and there's a lot of, uh, I think Emerson, Lake, and Palmer make appearances on this album. And uh, I'm not sure if any people, any people from King Crimson are on this album. Anyways, I was surprised. What a good album this is. I don't think it's very expensive if you find this in the stores used, but it is a really, I mean, it's good in the sense that it was way more than I expected. It's a really good album by Pete Sinfield um, called Still. And it's like I said, to this day, it's his only solo album. And you know what? The rest I'll, I'll save because I got some really good seven singles um, that are really important to me personally. Um, for that box I keep on talking about, and it's almost done. I keep, I keep making some last minute changes, but I got some singles for that. And this is a long video, but you know what? I'm loopy on pain medication and I haven't done a video in a while. And I've had some really good thrift store hauls. Cheers everyone. And uh, yeah, I think I spilled coffee on the Pete Sinfield album. Okay, sada, sada. Anyways, this has been Naz Nomad, or AKA, uh, David Michael, a.k.a. Naz Nomad. I want to say thank you to everyone who's been watching my videos. Um, in all honesty, I appreciate every single view. I really do. Good for bad. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Don't care. I love when you comment. Um, tell me what you want to see. I'll see if I can make it happen. I'm going to go lay down because my back is done. So anyways, cheers everyone. And we'll see you next time. Hopefully I'm a little bit more healthy and a little bit more lucid. Peace.